Hello everyone, I'm with Joan Cronin. Joan is the University of Tennessee Athletic Director Emeritus. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, it's great to be here. I love being here at the Hall of Fame with a Hall of Famer and, and one that's been a great part of what, what's happened here. So I appreciate your support. Thank you, ma'am. Tell us about yourself, please. Well, I was I knew what I wanted to be when I was 12. I am a Cajun with orange blood. I can't, grew up in Louisiana, <laughs> but been at the University of Tennessee for a long time. And at 12, they wouldn't let me play Little League Baseball. And I said, this is not fair. So my goal since 12 was to be in a business that helped women learn to compete. Before you came to Tennessee, you were at the College of Charleston. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of success there. Can you talk about that episode, please? Yeah, it was great. I went, went to Charleston. When I moved to Charleston, my husband got a job at the Citadel. I had a two-week-old and a 17-month-old, and I thought, how am I going to survive? But I still had this goal. Made a cold call, cold call, Mayor, to the president of the College of Charleston, and I said, you need to have women's athletics. And I was either a good negotiator or a bad one, but I walked out of his office and I was volleyball coach, basketball coach, tennis coach, and AD. So that's where we started. And in 10 years, we were named the number one program. And fortunately, Tennessee came knocking on my door and we came back to Rocky Top. Yeah, can you tell us about that, please? About how you ended up here at the Yeah, it was, uh, they had, had, Gloria Ray had been the first athletic director and was retiring. Pat was in Charleston. Uh, recruiting a young lady that I was recruiting also for the College of Charleston. And she said, Joan, the um, university's getting ready to hire a new athletic director. Why don't you apply? Well, I almost wrecked because this platform would offer so many opportunities to make, to promote women across the nation. And fortunately, I was able to get the job and the rest is history, 33 decades. I get credit for hiring Pat Summit but I didn't hire her, but I kept her. Yeah. And that's just as important. <laughs> <laughs> and then you made the transition to athletic director. They merged the We merged the, the programs and we were getting ready to, uh, it, it was time to merge the programs. And, and uh, I thought that, you know, what a better opportunity for me than to, to merge the programs, be a part of that. And then uh, I became athletic director emeritus. That means I'm old. That means I don't have to make major decisions and I can smile a lot more but still be a part of the program. One of the staples of University of Tennessee athletics is the Lady Vols basketball program. Absolutely. Huge, uh, just influential, not only across the state of Tennessee, across the country, really around the world. Yeah, you, you, you could be walking down the streets of Paris and have that Lady Vols shirt, and they'd come up and say, Mayor, do you know Pat Summit? <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, I never met Pat. Could you speak about your relationship oh, gosh, with her, you, please? Uh, you know, to have the opportunity to work with her for three decades, an opportunity to work with a leader. She could have been mayor. She could have been governor. She I probably could have run for you. Yeah. Everything. She was such a leader. But her platform was women's basketball. And I get asked all the time, what made Pat Summit a great coach? She was a great teacher. I have two daughters and a granddaughter. Uh, one of my daughters played basketball in high school. My granddaughter plays various uh, sports. Okay. What is the importance of sports for women and competition for well, women I, I think and, and it, young girls? Too. Yeah, I think, I think like men and women to be successful need to know how to compete. And I think athletics is one of the best tools to teach people to compete. I wrote a book, it's called Sport, uh, sport is life with the volume turned up. And it's what you learn from sport. Hey, you got something. I have a copy, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, tell us a little, you, you were, oops, sorry about that, gotcha. upside down. But you were. This, this, this is available here at the Sports Hall of Fame and available on Amazon, but it really is telling the story about what sport does and the story about what is important that we learn from sport. Not just, it's not just the wins and the losses, it's what you can do to prepare and that's why Pat was successful. She was a great teacher and she believed that sport was important. When I talk to sports teams, uh, that's one thing I always point out is you're not just competing against the other team, you're competing against yourself. And I feel that sports are a great metaphor for life because you know, life isn't fair. Things are gonna happen, you're gonna get knocked down. You can get a bad call every yeah. once in a while, and yeah. You have to get back up and keep playing. Yeah. 
And uh, that's, that's always my message is no matter what, you have to stay in the game, whether it's sports or whether it's life, there's a lot of uh, similarities between mm -hmm. those two. So as you mentioned, we are sitting in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, which is an impressive facility. Oh. Uh, has, a lot of artifacts, just all sorts of wonderful things about the history of women's basketball. Can you tell us the role that you played in bringing this? Well, it, you know, first of all, I'm here. so proud that it's here right. and it, it is a national hall of fame. It's not just a University of Tennessee or a Tennessee. It's a national women's basketball hall of fame. One of the only ones in the world. And uh, we have a way to emphasize the importance of the women who played the game. We have a great facility because we've worked well. Y'all have been so supporters, supportive of us when the city and the county and been huge, huge impact on what we're doing. And, uh, but it's, it's wonderful. We don't have a team that comes in to compete at the university that doesn't come through this Hall of Fame. And one of the things the coaches tell me is they learn so much. And I think you need to be, all of you need to make a point to let's visit the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame because this is where legends are. This is a great place to put on your list of things I want to do in Women's History Month. I absolutely agree 100%. Joan, thank you so much it. for your time. Thank All right, you. sounds uh -huh. good. Thank you, ma'am.